good morning and welcome. It is Pentecost Sunday and it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. The Lord lives. Praise to my rock. May the God of my salvation be exalted. We want to come and worship the Lord. We want to lift up his holy name and let his spirit move among us today. I'm so glad that you've chosen to come and join us to be in the house of the Lord to participate as the body of Christ in worshiping our wonderful Savior. A couple announcements, and I would encourage you to record your attendance and let us know that you're here on this beautiful morning. I want to say a big thank you to all of you who were part of uh, the retirement celebration, and, and uh, I have to say farewell uh, yesterday. Uh, a wonderful turnout, a really good feeling and a good spirit. And we thank you for the cards and the letters and for your prayers. That, that means so much to us. You're probably not aware of this, but there's been several people come and uh, mow at the, the church parsonage or they've uh, come to, to trim and mow and kind of take care of the yard and just re relieve us in this time that we're busy uh, packing and preparing to, to move on and I know they want the, the parsonage and the, and the yard to look really, uh, to shine at its best when the new pastor comes. Let me see. I'm going to turn it over to Abby. She's got uh, several announcements to make and lift up for Vacation Bible School. Okay, so we are just a couple of weeks away from Vacation Bible School, so it's crunch time. Um, next Sunday, we're going to be having a pocket change Sunday. So um, if you bring any change that you have um, with you from home, um, we'll have some cans um, that hopefully we'll have some youth come around and, uh, and take that from you. And um, then we can put that towards our vacation Bible school. Um, we still need a few supplies. If you look at the insert in your um, bulletin, it has all of the supplies that we are still looking for. Um, ketchup and mustard bottles, we'll just kind of set those on the, on the tables for, um, to make it look a little bit more real. Um, we are looking for some Adirondack chairs, like um, the plastic type ones. Um, we'll set up on the stage. Um, sandwich boards, people have asked what those are. Um, if you see some of the businesses around town, especially in front of like Joy Pop, it's just those signs um, that fold open. Um, so that's what a sandwich board is. Um, so if anybody has something like that, um, that's just kind of a lot of times food trucks will have those out front. Um, and so we can cover those with a poster or something. Um, and then like a collapsible picnic table. Um, if anybody has one of the white uh, Lifetime brand ones, or I know there's sometimes camping ones that you can have, um, something like that would just kind of make it a little more authentic up here. Um, we do still need some crew leaders, um, which that can, we usually do like mid-high or senior high. Adults are also welcome to do that. Um, it's not as quite as much of maybe pressure as uh, being a leader. Um, so if anybody's interested in that or has grandkids that would like to do that, um, send them our way um, or they can register online as well. Um, and then we're also having a mission project this year. Um, in the past, we have done um, donations to the food pantry, and it really fits in with our theme this year of food truck party. Um, so we're going to continue to do that this year. Um, and in the insert is listed what you can bring. Um, we want to involve the congregation as well. And so if, um, if you would like to donate, you can start bringing those next Sunday. You can bring them um, for probably the next three Sundays and we'll bring that stuff over there. Um, our plan is to have a big food truck up front here, um, kind of on the floor, and we can put them there so then all the kids can um, see our food multiply and what, what we're gonna do with it. So um, if you have any questions, um, let me know. Please get your kids registered online, um, or there's paper registration forms in the back, and um, I should be in the office most days this week since it's crunch time. Um, but otherwise, you can get my phone number from Pam or, um, or just call the office. We do, do, do a, a video at this time? Or? Oh. Yes. Josh, do you have a video? Did you get that video that I sent you? Okay. We'll maybe do a video a little bit later. 
Okay. All right. Okay. I noticed that several surveys were coming in and, and being placed in the basket this morning. The Moving Forward Committee is meeting tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock, and they want to kind of do a summary or, or be able to review all the, the surveys. And so I, I'm suggesting that if you could have them to the office here by noon, if you still need to, to turn one in, that would be great. They would still welcome them over the next week. They just need to kind of get started and seeing uh, how many have been turned in and, and uh, kind of the, the sentiment or the flow and the, the feeling from the survey. Uh, women's Bible study uh, is uh, a new, new leader, a new session starting on Tuesday at 9.30 over at the Education Building. Then uh, 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 something to keep in, in prayer, the Great Plains Annual Conference is at La Vista, Nebraska. Begins on Wednesday. Uh, I'll be leaving around noon to get up there to finish the registration, get settled in the hotel, and then we start uh, late afternoon around 4 o'clock. So that runs through noontime on Saturday, the 8th through the 11th. And so uh, we invite you to be in prayer uh, for all the events going on there. Ministry Board will meet uh, on the 13th. We ask for you to be in prayer for things going on in our world, for uh, a prayer for the end of the, the, the violence, the, the shooting, and, and, and needless deaths. We mentioned toward the end of our, our it, it came as a surprise, so we wanted to announce it again uh, this Sunday. Condolences to the family of um, Kevin Weichel for the passing of his sister, Kathy Weichel Barnett. And if you would remember them in your prayers. Are there some birthdays to celebrate? Now, June has a lot of weddings, typically. Um, is there anybody got that hand ready to, to shoot up? When's uh, anniversaries to celebrate? Oh, yes, okay. Jesse and I on Friday. On Friday. Tara and Jesse, congratulations. I think we're going to sing, okay? Yeah. Take a moment now and just welcome, greet people nearby. Let them know that you're uh, excited to see them this morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. She is going to come up and join us. Okay, all right. Good morning. Good to see you. And good morning. Hi, Sherry. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. So where's where's Sharon at now? North Carolina, Florida? She's visiting some missionary friends of ours in Mississippi. Miss well, okay. <laughs> see, I never would have guessed that. So but. they had been longtime missionaries in Haiti, mm -hmm. and then he was appointed as president of Wesley Biblical Seminary oh, okay. yeah. in Mississippi. So, yeah. All right. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can uh, find our pews and, and uh, warm up our voices. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
Let me invite you to please be seated. And I'm, I'm looking around. Oh, look, there's Josh. He's got his arms full. I... All right. Let's see. Do we have any kids? There we go. Yes. Oh, this is going to be cool. <laughs> All right. Oh, we got one more. We got one more coming. All right. How you guys doing? Doing good? Good. Okay. So I'm going to set this down for a second because it's kind of getting heavy. Okay. So what do we want to talk about today? I'm um, going to talk about something that, you know, just came to me. And I thought, you know, whenever we learn things in the Bible, okay, there are certain things that we think about that are like, did that really happen? Because like whenever you think Jesus walking on water, right? And he like walked across the water and he's like, there's like waves going and everything. When I'm thinking walking across water, I'm thinking like he had like, uh, it was about as big as a cookie sheet, you know, and he's just kind of walking across there, maybe splashing a little bit, right? Because I just can't imagine what it's like to see somebody who's walking on top of like an ocean, right? Can you guys imagine that? Yeah, it's hard to, it, yeah, you really want things to be like real. And so um, what's another thing that, that you kind of think of that you can't just even imagine? Oh, so whenever Jesus was in the tomb and they rolled the stone away. So this, this weekend, I was looking and I went, there's a landscape company and they had these big gigantic boulders, right? And they couldn't move them, you know, they couldn't just sit there and go, eh, that, that needs to go over there. They couldn't just push them like that. They had to get like a forklift or a tractor and to move these big gigantic rocks. And I'm thinking, yeah, and that boulder that was over the tomb, that was like huge. That was like bigger than me. And they had to use like big gigantic sticks to roll that away. And I was like, wow, it just, it just doesn't seem real. And so another thing that came to mind that I thought it's hard for kids to really understand what it's like whenever you say things like um, the word of God or the tongue is like a double-edged sword. Because like, have you guys held a double-edged sword before? This is going to be cool. <laughs> I just happen to uh, have my broadsword here. And this is kind of what a double-edged sword looks like. And it's cool that there's only two of you because you guys can touch it and see what it's like. Here, like, hold on to it. Yeah, but is it heavy? It's pretty heavy, right? It's not very sharp, because this one's just a replica sword. But uh, if you swung it, it would, like, hurt somebody, right? Like, if you, you actually, like, had it and, and swung it around and stuff, that, that would hurt somebody, right? Yeah. So, I mean, even the points are kind of, they're kind of pointy, right? So that would hurt, getting hit by it. But we don't really know what that looks like. Now... Here's what I want, okay, can you guys, we're going to do a little bit of pretending, okay? So close your eyes, now hold out your hands like in fists, like in your fists, like you're holding on to a sword, okay? Now, you think you can hold that one with one hand? This one's going to take two hands, so hold it out in two hands, like this, okay? Now, swing your sword, swing it, <laughs> like that. Okay, here, let me scooch back, like this. You swing that, swing that sword, okay? Do you know that that's what it's like whenever you tell somebody like something bad about them? Like if you call somebody ugly, it's like swinging a sword at them. Or when you lie to somebody to like make yourself look better, it's like taking and swinging a sword at them. 
And that's what the Bible means whenever it says that your tongue or what you say is like a two-edged sword. But it also says that, what was that verse, Abe? For the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword, and it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And what it means is, is that the Bible and the truth in it does this to us. And it cuts right through to the heart of people, and it reaches people because it wants to teach you to be good all the time. Isn't that cool? And the sword's cool too, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of cool. All right, can we pray? Dear God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for what your word teaches us, and we pray that it would reach into our hearts like a double-edged sword and cut us in the way that we would learn to be good and to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Thank you, Josh. Uh, Josh. <coughs> okay. Let's move into our prayer time and prepare our hearts for our time of Holy Communion and lift up the things God has uh, placed on your heart. In a few moments, I'd like to lead us in a prayer. Father God, the most high God, creator of all things, the giver of life, we've come to worship you, and to praise you. Lord, you are high and lifted up, higher than our thoughts, so far away and yet so close that you touch our lives. You live in indescribable, unapproachable light. Your radiance and your glory would overwhelm us. Oh, Lord, we praise your name for your steadfast love endures forever. Lord, let the light of your love touch us today. We, may we feel your presence. May the overflow of your grace surround us, touch us, and lift us up. Oh, we thank you and we praise you. We praise you because we know that you're here where two or three are gathered in your name. There you are in our midst. Lord, we, we pause to bow before you, to seek your face, and to repent of our sins. Lord, give us the courage and the strength to totally turn away from that which attracts us that is evil or wrong, for attitudes that we harbor, for the things that are ugly about us, that we would turn to you, turn to life, turn to you for your grace and love to be poured out. O oh Lord, create in us clean hearts that we would desire more than anything to love you, to love you with our whole heart. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, as we drive around the countryside right now, things are, are green, pretty, and beautiful. We see that the, the crops are, are gaining ground and that they're, they're growing and it makes us anticipate and, to, and create in us a hope for the harvest that will come. Lord, you are the Lord of the harvest. So we pray that our words, that our acts of compassion and that our kindness, our prayers 
and the very soil of our hearts would bear fruit. May our efforts and our prayers for Vacation Bible School reap a harvest greater than our expectations. Jesus, you're the great multiplier. Increase our hope, fan our faith to life, and magnify our delight in you. We would say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, bless us. Bless us and draw us closer and nearer to your very spirit and to your heart. Lord, send your Holy Spirit to comfort those who are hurting. With your healing hand, touch those who are sick or recovering and bless them. Bring them healing. Touch them at the very point of their need. May your Holy Spirit be our guide to be our teacher, to help us to stay on the right path, building our character. And Lord, may there be a boldness about us to dream of doing more for you than we've dreamt before. To be larger as a church, to have be more impactful in our community for our grace and our love and our acceptance of one another to overflow. Oh Lord, we praise you. We praise you for all things are possible with you. Hear our prayers as we Prepare our hearts to come to your table. We pray that our hearts now are, are clean, that we can join into to union with you and with everyone here, that there would be peace, unity, and love of your spirit. For we pray this now in the power, in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing, I Come With Joy, verses one through four. Did everyone pick up a communion packet when you came in? Is anyone in need of one? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands. We'll go through the liturgy and then together we'll open up the communion packets and share that time together. The Lord invites to his table all who profess that Jesus is Lord. In the United Methodist Church, we have an open communion, and we invite everyone, as, as we can't imagine Jesus turning anyone away from his table, from saying that 
we receive his grace, his love, his forgiveness. And so will you join with me as we share together the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce the time of the year the Lord's favor had come. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread he gave thanks to the Father. Then he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to the Father. Then he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here and on those who are watching. And over these gifts of the bread and the juice, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of his Spirit. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in his final victory, and we get to feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Will you join with me and let us share together our Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. And so we take our communion packets and we open up the bread. Christ's body, broken for you, that in him we would find and discover the fullness of life. We open up the cup. The cup of his redemption that by his blood our sins are forgiven and we find in him everlasting life. Take and drink and may the peace of God be with you. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we gather together. We find that your presence is sweet. The promises that you hold out for us offer us so much. The gift of your everlasting love. All of these things touch our hearts deeply. Lord, may we be more willing to serve you, to live for you, to honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may I invite the ushers to come that we might continue our worship as we give our tithes and our offerings. Please receive our prayer of dedication. With these gifts, we give ourselves to the world that you have created, to the love that you have poured out, and to the work of your holy church. Grant us your mercy that we may be strengthened to walk in your ways, even as you walk with us each day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, gentlemen. I invite you to please rise. you to remain standing, if you would, for the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. Today we're in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, then 14 through 24. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, 
And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And moving down to verse 14. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered before the prophet the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God, with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you, as you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. if you'd like, I would invite you to please be seated. So it's Pentecost. The reading from Acts 2 describes for us a very dramatic way that God gave birth to his church. It came with a mighty force, a wind that filled the place, and it was the power of the Holy Spirit showing up baptizing 120 believers in the upper room in such a way that they all began to speak in tongues and give praise and glory to God. Verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit is often described as being like the wind. It can blow in a great force, a great power like a gale force wind, or it can quietly and softly sneak up on someone like a gentle breeze. And next to it rushed in with such a force that it appeared to them like red flaming tongues were landing on one another. And in the power of that moment, they burst out, filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in languages they had never studied, had never learned before. Because it was Pentecost, Jewish men and their families had traveled from all the known world. It's one of those feasts that every male Jew is required to come to the temple and celebrate and to give their gift at the offering. So, we bypass the verses that described where all the countries were from, and all of those countries, those individuals, 
heard the 120 speaking praises and glory to God in the language that they were used to in those foreign lands. It was a great moment of supernatural power and glory. And the church was birthed. Now, I'm not going to go on and explain all of Peter's message, but it was so powerful, and the movement of the Spirit was so strong that 3,000 were added to the church that day. Pentecost comes 50 days after Easter. From one harvest in the, the early spring harvest to the later spring harvest. But this was the promise of the Father. And when it was given, it came with such great power and made a dramatic impact. The Holy Spirit has a vital role in helping us as Christians. He was sent to us to be a comforter, a helper, to be our teacher and our guide to lead us into worship that would give honor and glory to God, but it would be worship in spirit, power, truth, and obedience. It's vital that every believer experience and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now I want to move down to a, another dramatic moment in Peter's message in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 to 39. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Luke uses dramatic words to say everyone was cut to the heart. That was the work of the Holy Spirit convicting, not condemning. That's an important distinction. Convicting them of their need their need for God, their need for a Savior, their need to repent. So Peter told them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. But it doesn't stop there. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that does the supernatural work of turning our hearts toward God, of transforming, shaping, and molding our hearts to grow into a more mature Christian life. It is the gift of the Father. It is sent by the Son, and it's in the power of the Holy Spirit that God is glorified in us and in the work and life of the church. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that brings a church to life and helps us to bear fruit and draw people to us. Now I want to go back to verse 39 for a moment. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Now, I can say without a word of any doubt, none of us were there present to hear Peter's message. But God was thinking of us even then. And we are included in this as maybe those who are far off or as one of those who God has called by his own intention, by his own heart, to be a follower of his and a child of God. So you and I are included in the statement, which leads me to the question that I'm dying to ask, who brought you to church? 
Who brought you to church? That's kind of a leading question. What I really want to ask is, what was the manner or how did you hear the gospel? Was there a time in your life that you felt like you were cut to the heart? That you had to make a decision, that you had to do something so that you would know with assurance that you are saved? Who brought you to church? Who brought you to a place where they could influence you and and help guide you and mentor you in becoming a Christian and then walking and growing in that life? As I think about that question, I would have to say the person that influenced me and planted the seeds of faith was my grandmother, Grandma Thompson. Her name was Geneva Thompson. So Grandma Thompson, for 17 years, she struggled with cancer. She might have surgery and then start chemo, maybe add some radiation. Then after a while, that would go into remission. Might last three, four, or five years, and then it would show up again. And the treatments would start all over again. But she had a very strong faith. My mom was an only child, partly because even way back when my mom was born, Grandma suddenly started having different problems and it would not have been safe to try to bear another child. But all her life, she was guided by her faith. I remember as a four or five year old going to spend a week of vacation at the Wesley Motor Lodge uh, right next door to Wesley Hospital in Wichita. That's what grandma would be there for treatments and mom being the only child. We were there to help comfort grandpa and and there was a swimming pool there. That was kind of nice. The kids could go swimming. It was confusing. Why are we here for this week and how come grandma and grandpa didn't come home with us when vacation was over? In my teen years, it became apparent that there were a lot of nights that Grandma just couldn't get comfortable, couldn't fall asleep in the bed, and she would come out to the recliner. And there at her stand by the bed was her Bible, one or two devotional books, several Christian books to inspire her, to keep her faith alive. She was a prayer warrior. She led the family in the sense by having a deeper knowledge of the scriptures, relying on God and walking by faith, but also by her testimony, by her words of encouragement and her words to me that no matter what happens, you're not alone. God loves you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never leave you. I knew at some point, I don't remember at what point in Grandma's life, but I had heard that she had gone on some lay witness missions. Anybody here gone on any lay witness missions? You kind of know what I'm talking about. You're given a a neighborhood or a section of town where maybe you and somebody else, and sometimes for Grandma it was just her because she would go when she felt like she had the strength or the, the energy. But on one occasion, it was a Sunday afternoon, She knocked on a door. I don't know if she even knew who lived there, but the wife invited her in. It was Sunday afternoon. The Kansas City Chiefs were on TV. So what did Grandma do? She came and stood in front of the TV so she could get the husband's attention and share the gospel with both husband and wife. Now, I don't know what was said. I don't know everything that transpired. So I'll cut to the chase. Before Grandma left, the TV had been turned off. The husband was on his knees and accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Praise God. 
Now, Grandma never told me that story. When I was either a junior or senior in high school, I was at a businessmen's full gospel meeting, and Jim Prather came up, and Jim told me this story because he was the one who missed the Chiefs game and gave his life to Jesus Christ. Who brought you to church? Was it your mom or your dad? Perhaps a grandparent. Maybe it was a Sunday school teacher who shared the gospel with you. I want to say a few words about my dad. I always liked this story that dad used to tell. Dad got a, a call from the postmaster. Uh, he was living at Fort Dodge because Grandpa Hasty was a disabled World War I veteran. And um, he was like 19, maybe going on 20 years old. He was working at a gas station that happened to be owned by somebody who lived in Fort Dodge. And anyway, the postmaster Fort Dodge called him and said, I got something here that looks like your draft notice. The Korean War was going on. So I'm going to hold it for 24 hours. Whatever you do, that's up to you. But if not, it's going to be delivered tomorrow, and you're going to be drafted. So he went up and talked to the Air Force recruiter and enlisted. So that you're then at your induction, and you're filling out these cards, and people are asking you questions. And one of the questions was this. Would you like to declare a religious preference? Or maybe the question was just simply asked, what church do you attend? My dad thought about it for a while because living in Fredonia, Grandma had taken them to this community church or to that community church. And the guy in front of Dad had said, oh, put me down as a Methodist. And Dad thought about it for a moment. And surely at some point I must have attended a Methodist church. That sure sounds good to me. I'll put down Methodist. And that was what was on his dog tags. Luckily, Mom was a Methodist, too. Did you get that? that? The providence of God? Okay. So, Grandma Thompson, her faith was solid. It was solid enough to help her stand through all the storms of life. She stood on the rock of Christ. Her faith was genuine. It attracted people because of her quiet confidence and peace. My dad's faith was also genuine, and it showed in his compassion and the care that he had for others. To his children and grandchildren, he was a great cheerleader. And by that I mean he never failed to tell them how special they were to him or to give them a word of encouragement. Now, as I started to say, Grandma Hasty was the one who brought the family to churches in Fredonia or at Fort Dodge. And then when Dad married Mom, it was Mom, because she was interested and because it meant something to her, brought Dad to church. But over time, Dad went to church because now it meant something to him, because he wanted to know more about who is Jesus. How can I best worship my Savior? So I want to ask two questions. Who brought you to church? And who did you bring to church? Have you been that influence in someone's life that you were the one sharing the scriptures, telling the gospel, encouraging them, let's go to church. We love the music. We like the experience of knowing God's presence and God's grace is there among his people. Who is it that brought you to church? Who did you bring to church? So, are you doing your part? Are you putting your faith and your hope and your encouragement into someone else's life? Are you the one who brought someone the gospel 
and invited them to church? Does someone name you as that one who influenced them the most? That I'm here today because they invited me. They told me good news. It's never too late to impact God's kingdom. Ask God right now, who should you be influencing? Who do you need to talk to? Who do you need to pray for that they might come to church? That they might respond to the gospel? That they might be willing to get on their knees and invite Jesus into their hearts? May the power of the Holy Spirit show up to transform our hearts, to loosen our tongues, and let us bring someone to church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our closing hymn is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. I'd like to invite you to stand. Good morning, everyone. Just a quick, um, wanted to say a quick few things here before we adjourn for the day. Um, Sarah, would you like to come up and join us? 
I would like to echo what Pastor Doug had said earlier in thanking everyone who came out and celebrated Pastor Doug's retirement yesterday. I'd also like to thank those who helped plan, who helped prepare, and who helped serve at that reception. Pastor Doug, we would like to thank you for your scripture-rich, calm, and compassionate presence during these last three years during your stay with us. We wish, we wish you God's peace and blessing as you go forward in your retirement, and congratulations. We would like you to have one of our, um, a, one of our created charcuterie boards uh, <laughs> with the... Um, our Methodist symbol and the Sabetha First United Methodist Church at the bottom. Okay. And also a gift card to fill that charcuterie board. All right. Uh, to share okay. with your friends and family. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Doug, Sarah, Pat, and family, we have been blessed to have gotten to know all of you, to worship with you and grow with you. Thank you for being a part of our family, for sharing in our joys and our sorrows in walking with us and giving all the glory to God. We wish you nothing but the best. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. you want to sit down? And Pastor, on behalf of the congregation, we have a song to share with you. Well. <clears throat>
to send off. Thank you very much. Receive this benediction. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the power of his love. May you walk with him in the light that shines on you every day from the heart of Christ. Go with his grace and blessing. Amen.